All right, team, let's get going. I apparently decided to dress like Johnny Cash on the hard, hottest day of the year so far, so uh, so I'm a little bit hot. Um, all right. Okay, good. Hey, so did they fix the temperature? No, it's always hot. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about graphing. So I want to run through some uh, just examples and talk about what works and what doesn't work in terms of making effective graphical presentation of your quantitative data. We'll do this and then when we, we'll take a little break and then we'll get to everybody's uh, maps and, and such. So Let's start off, and why don't you guys tell me about this figure. This is one I've used in one of my other classes, so you guys might have seen this before. But, uh... What the hell? <laughs> so, so far, it's telling me nothing. So, okay, okay, so first stare at it for a second, without, without uh, out loud chiming in, and see if you can figure out what this means. Um, how many wait, 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 for a second. Hold on. <laughs> Give everybody a chance. Okay, Rob, what do you think it means? How many mascots there are? Uh, in, like on, I'm assuming sports teams in the West Coast, uh, Central America. Okay, so sports team, uh, how many mascots there are? Yeah. Okay. I think it's the size of the costume. Okay, size of the costume I get. Amount sold, how many, how many uh, of these products have been purchased maybe in different regions, something like that? What else could it be, or, or might it be? Why are you having a hard time understanding what this graph says? Excellent, I love, everybody has the answer. So, so I, heard, I heard title first, okay, so it lacks an effective title, what else? Labels, okay, so uh, Vanessa was talking about labels, you mean the ax on the axes, you mean? Okay, and some, what else? The error bars are incorrect. The error bars are incorrect. We don't know they're incorrect. Well, they don't have standard error, they don't have a negative value. Uh, well, they, they could have just shown the positive one. Okay. But, but what are those error bars? Are those error bars? I don't know. Are those ranges? Ranges? You don't know. You don't know, right? Probably error bars, but are they are they confidence intervals? Are they standard errors? Right? Can't don't know what it is. What do the bars represent, by the way? No idea. West West Coast, West Coast, Central Coast, and East Coast. Uh, sure. But what numeric value do they represent? One through thirty-six. Okay, so some unit that is unlabeled. Generally speaking, people do this to show the, the mean or the average, but it could be all kinds of other stuff, right? It could be, it could be the, the maximum scene or, or something. <coughs> so we don't know what the bars mean. We don't know what the error bars mean. We don't know what the units are. What else? Or you guys said not labeled. OK. The numbers are really squished together. Ah, good. OK, so aesthetically, even if it was all perfectly labeled, it's really hard to read. The 35 is, is not even between the 34 and 36. It's, it's slightly overlapping the 34 and 36, for example. So, so aesthetically, it, it's a little bit hard to, you know, for our eyeballs to pick out what, what's what. Okay, anything else? Okay, can everybody see, everybody in this room see there's three different colors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I like colorful graphs, but not everybody can see colors, so it's actually, I think it's actually good because it's different shades. So you can tell that there is a difference from the left to the right. So if I can't see blue or green. Okay, good. So colorblind is, is a thing, so right? So, so the, I'm not saying you have to do black and white, but this actually probably is an effective, if you're trying to show distinct things, probably an effective color scheme. Not saying we should use this color scheme, but if we wanted to use a color scheme, this is one that most people can see. Uh, males are more likely to be colorblind than our females. And there are uh, certain colors that are more problematic, orange and green, uh, red and green, but there's a whole host of potential uh, color 
uh, or, or colors that can be problematic. Um, did I tell you guys a story of when I made the color graph up at my postdoc? So I made this graph and I was showing restoration success and I was presenting this to my postdoctoral advisor and a bunch of people, we had a big lab, so our lab was not quite as big as this class, but it was probably about half the size of this class. It was a lot of people, graduate students and postdocs and researchers and such. So I gave this talk and then I had a, I should actually show you the graph, but it ba basically it was, it was a, red, a red line, a yellow line, and a green line. And, uh, and green was showing good, red was showing bad, and yellow was this kind of, eh, not, not quite too sure. So I showed this, and in the middle of my, oh, I thought it was a very, I was very proud of myself, I thought it was, I was very smart. And I said, da, 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 and then my postdoc advisor, who's a very uh, brusque individual, said, what's, what's that? What's, what are you doing over there? I said, what? He's like, I can't tell what's what. I said, oh, well, the success is the green, and the you know, poor is red. I actually said it with, you know, orally. I'd said, said that, but he, I don't know, wasn't paying attention or was trying to sweat me or whatever. He said, I can't tell which one's which. I said, well, the green is the one on top. I'm colorblind. And then I remember getting super red. I don't usually get embarrassed, but I remember feeling embarrassed. I said, oh, uh, uh, yeah, mm, sorry, I didn't. Uh, hey, don't use, don't use those colors anymore. That's, like, that's, that's for idiots who do that. But, oh, yeah, yeah, that's for idiots. Uh, thanks a lot. And so, um, so I went back, and I'd shown the graph to my technician, and, uh, and I asked him what he thought. He said, oh, that seems good. So I was talking to him. I was like, God, I didn't know that, that, uh, that Paul was, was colorblind. And he said, oh, there's a lot of people that are colorblind in the U.S. I said, yeah, well, I guess so. So good to know that he is. And then my technician said, you know, I'm colorblind, right? <laughs> and I said, what? And I know this guy for, I don't know, like six years or something. I brought him up with me from UCLA. And I said, what do you mean you're colorblind? He said, oh, yeah, I'm colorblind. I said, so wait, can you tell the difference? Like, not really. I can't really tell the difference. Of like, why didn't you tell me that when I showed you the graph? You're supposed to give me feedback. And he said, oh, I figured it was OK. So anyway, so um, yes, everybody makes mistakes with, with colors at times. Um, I would say that, that you know, if, that some people go to the extreme and say you should never, ever, 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 ever use any color, ever, because it might possibly be perceived. I, I, that's not necessarily the right way to go either. You really want to just make sure that if we, if we use a red line and a green line, maybe we can make the red line solid and the green line dotted. So you still have that aesthetics for most people, and they can intuitively pick up what you're signaling, but it's not, you know, it's not a deal breaker if someone is, is uh, whatever. Okay, so how about this? Here, here's a fixed version of that same graph. What do you guys think about this? Okay, so, so what is it, what it, now do you know what this graph is showing? I take it from the silence you totally understand. <laughs> the volume of mascot costumes. Right. And the baseball and the minor league baseball team. Right. <laughs> right. In the US. In the US. There you go. There you go. It's a geographical amount. It shows what the Cubic meters. Uh huh. So it was the size of the costume, right, that we were showing. I thought it was. I didn't think it was size of the costume. I thought it was. But what is volume? It's cubic meters. I think it's really telling us that they use shorter people. So clearly the East Coast have short people, exactly. Or at least thinner people. At least thinner. Smaller, smaller folks. Smaller folks. Small hands. So, uh, so the error bars, or excuse me, the bars, the solid bars represent the mean we know now. And it's showing plus one standard deviation. So now we have some, some way to interpret that uh, line. We've gotten rid of all the, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, all that clustering of the numbers. Um, do we need to have, so recall this had three different colors. Do we need three different colors here? Right, no. So usually that would, so e in this case, each uh, west, central, east, they're all one different category. 
So we don't, we don't necessarily need a color to you know, add on to that. Uh, we can get by with a, a consistent color in this case. Cool? So, we, so just like our writing, we always can edit, can refine, can tweak, can make our graphics uh, better. So it starts with starting with something, right? And then after we have that, we can go. Much easier, just like writing, much easier to go forward when we have something that's not a blank page and it's something we can sort of get our hand, hands around and try this and what if we put a color in there and, and start mussing around. So that's why uh, you guys should all start uh, on your graphs uh, sooner rather than later, just like your writing. Okay, so here's another, here's another uh, figure. And uh, why don't you guys tell me what this is, what this is trying to say. Okay, it tells us something about that. Well, John, what do you say? So the um, x-axis shows uh, income. Mm -hmm. Right, income. And uh -huh. then the uh, y-axis tells us um, the amount of income for and the amount of like federal revenue from each specific Contribution, class. right. Contribution by those different classes. Right, good. Robert. I was going to point out the problem. What's the problem? The problem is that it's, let's say, look, look at the middle. Okay. 100,000 to 1 million uh, is the range versus at the very start, it's 1 to 5,000. Right. So the data is skewed to like throughout. Right. So this graph is from an op-ed in uh, a, a news source that is, is known for their op-eds for, for um, being biased at times, I guess we could say, or, or having a strong political leaning. So they were trying to make a point in this op-ed, and to support their point, they wanted a graph. Because why? Graphs look science-y, right? So here's our science-y graph. So the idea here is intentionally to mislead you. So just so we're all understanding this, this was intentionally drawn to, if you, so that if you glance at this, it seems to support their argument. Their argument is, oh my God, if we do this, uh, in this particular case, all these middle income earners are going to be paying the bulk of the taxes. When in reality, if we, if we draw it based on um, you know, equal, equal breakups on the <coughs> x-axis, equal categorizations, equal binning, it shows that the wealthiest folks pay the most. So this is very disingenuous. This is non-academic. This is anti-critical reasoning. And this is unfortunately common uh, in, in certain sectors. So being a good grapher isn't just good for you guys in making your effective presentations. It hopefully will make you a better consumer of data elsewhere, right? So yeah, so the big flag here was, was that the bins were not uh, the, uh, the same sizes. And while in theory, there might potentially be a reason why you might want to do that, almost always it is to push a certain viewpoint, uh, for a certain slant on the data. So we have a question? No? All right, cool. So there we go. So what do you guys, th what, tell me what you think makes an effective graphical presentation of data, just in general, what would you guys say? X and Y axes are labeled clearly. Okay, so what, whatever information we put up there is clearly articulated and labeled, good, what else? Let's write that down, where's my, uh, geez, no pens here. Your audience can understand the graph without having to explain it. Okay, so first is uh, uh, properly lab labels, and then you said, uh, so uh, interpretable on its own. Okay, so, so uh, don't need explanation. Okay, what else? Descriptive title. 
Uh, okay, okay. Title that helps lead us through. Title that's effective. Okay, good. What else? Okay, so a, a, a title effective and, and possibly, depending on the context, uh, a more detail in the legend. Okay, good. We probably call them their labels, but units of what you're measuring. Okay, okay so, so labels and units. Okay, good. Units are clear. Good. Anything else? The data points are clear. Uh, you mean as in just just like, visually clear? Like yeah, like just visually clear. Like the bar, like if you have like a line graph, that it's two separate, like it could be two separate lines or. Okay, I guess I'd call that data viewable or something. Okay, so data viewable. Okay, good. What else? Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So. So. Um, uh, if you were showing a bunch of graphs, if you're going to call site one or, or the first three sites, make those red, the next four sites a hollow plot or whatever, if you're consistent throughout those, it makes it much easier for folks to jump from your first graph to your third graph, for example. If I'm giving my graph in a oral presentation, the very first time I might orient folks to the layout of the data, and then keep that consistent. So once they've got that in their head, they're going to follow the same thing. So, so I'll say consistency there. That's good. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, like Rob was saying, make sure your data is like even so you don't skew it in any uh, objectifiable way. Uh, uh, okay, so maybe we could, on, honest. How about honest presentation of the data? Honest. Honest presentation. Okay, good. Anything else? That's a good, that's a good starter list. Let's look at a couple of different uh, graphs. So this might be a little hard to read just because it's, it's old printing. But um, does anybody know what this is? Has anybody seen this before? So this is, what's that? It is a map. It's a quantitative map. So this is often put out. This was uh, Edward Tufte, who's a famous uh, statistician and grapher, uh, started using this in the, uh, as an example in the early 90s. And it's really become sort of an example of a classic um, presentation of lots and lots of data in a very concise way. So this is a historical map and historical map. Um, Hind casting what happened to Napoleon when he tried to invade Russia. So, Are those yes, those are the number of people that died. So we're starting with, well, actually, so we're starting with right here. These guys are leaving uh, the west and moving into the east, heading towards Moscow. This is a French map maker. And um, what we're showing here is the size of the army. So the width, in this case, represents how many people were in the uh, caravan, or whatever we call it, the march, or whatever it's called. And so they're going, 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 going. And then as we go, 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 this, these guys break off, go this way. These guys break off. Um, and then as they go, check it out. It's getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. It's because guys are dying, because it's, it's harsh. Uh, environment, not enough food, and these guys are dying, 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 dying. They get here, they try to take Moscow, it doesn't work, and they retreat. So here they're retreating, 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 retreating. They go slightly a different route back. Do, 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 do. And these are the amount of survivors that get back um, at the end of the campaign. So this is showing geographically how they moved and through what towns and such they, that they did. The number of people this is showing the elevational uh, change and the temperature. Uh, and then again, this is just an actual map of the, of the geography underneath it. So that's a, pretty, that's a pretty dense way. There's a lot of data contained there, right? 
So just because we're doing, say, a two-dimensional representation of data, it does not need to be simplistic necessarily. And so this one takes a little bit of explanation, right? A little bit of a legend, if you will, like you guys were just saying. But uh, that's a lot of information crammed in there. And this is, you know, almost 200 years ago. So you don't need a fancy computer. What you need is you need to think it out in your head first. So one of the best ways to figure out how you want to graph your stuff is to use crayons and a piece of paper, right? Pencil and a piece of paper. You don't need to start in Excel. You don't need to start in Plotly. You don't need to start in R or some graphing program. You need to start in your head to figure out what's an effective way to present the stuff. And then we can get onto the mechanics of actually trying to draw it and trying to get it to be represented. Cool? How about this? Effective, not effective. Uh, so, and for normally when I show st stuff here, I always attribute the author and this and that. For this presentation, I don't really do that. A couple times, if there are a graph that I had, I just left it in. But I'm not trying to call anybody's name out. I'm not trying to embarrass anyone. We're, we're just looking at the, and I'm also not trying to take attribution here. I'm just trying to show these things. Okay, so that's why there's no uh, person's name or, or data source attributed here. John. It's simplistic, but it gives me a good feel for uh, another dimension of what's being uh, represented. Okay, and why is it effective to you? Because it's uh, very starkly color-coded, and can we talk about the whole color blindness thing earlier? So red and blue may not be the best color choices, but I mean, other than that, it adds another level of connection to the data that's being represented. Because it's like, oh, well, that's the profile of the smell. Maybe I don't know what a smell looks like uh -huh. or a perch. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so, so if you were worried about, uh, say, colorblind, we could just turn that blue into maybe a dotted blue. Yeah. And, and having the smelt next to the right line versus having the perch next to the left line, probably a good chance that someone, uh, or at least would reasonably infer that, that the perch was the one on the left, that the perch population was one on the left and rainbow was the one on the right. Evie. I would have just had like actual images of what they looked like. So okay. I would kind of get what they looked like and then kind of have, uh, I guess, a legend and put like red was this was the yellow perch and then blue perch. Right. Okay, so, so may, maybe a, a re more realistic depiction of these guys, yeah. and you know, clearly the title and probably a figure, but okay, good, good. But uh, somebody else in the back had a hand up? I was going to say the same thing. Okay, anybody else? Okay, cool. Um, what, what pattern might you infer from this data? Or what conclusion might you take away from this data? Rob? That as the uh, <coughs> yellow perch was overfished, the rainbow smell uh, kind of became invasive. Or at least, or at least, w when the, when the perch went away, uh, that seems to have somehow allowed the smelt to go up, right? Or now we don't we don't know causality here, but but cool. We, so in other words, an effective graph also. Or, well, now our data don't always show this, but in an ideal world, not only does our data show what we found, it actually takes the audience to the next level, and they're oh. So did that, did the perch do it to the smelt or did the smelt do it to the perch? Was it independent? Ah, oh, because it looks like, you know, and, and then that's cool, right? Now they're talking. Now they're thinking about your project. Now they're, they're, they, they have enough information for them to be a part of the conversation, for the audience to be a part of the conversation. So that's good. That's good. Other comments about this guy? All right, cool. How about this one? What's this one telling us? Uh, how much, uh, maybe not necessarily how much, how much area roads are taking up. I think it's how much area is close to a road. That's right. It's how much area is close to a road. So if you, uh, at least that's what it's trying to say. So distance on the x-axis that we go away, and as we go farther and farther away from the road, um, we're encountering more and more of the land. So that... Uh, for example, about, so if we look at this, you know, so about, let's say, 60%-ish of the land area in the lower 48 is 
within about 500 meters of a road, for example. Does this work or not work as a graph? What do you guys think? Okay, not as clear. How could it be clearer? Okay, more, so you mean more, more title or more legend kind of thing? Something. Okay. Kind of confusing. I mean, I know where this is from, so but I just What else? I think initially graphs can be confusing. In fact, they all are to me. But once you stare at it for a while, it starts coming together. Um, a lot of times, if there's not as many bullet points like this one. Data points, uh-huh. Data points, yeah. Um, sometimes it helps to have a specific uh, coordinate for the points, or at least every few points, to help you get an exact idea just by looking at the point okay. of what you're looking at. So, so one way, so John's talking about points being far away. So one help are these, uh, these are tick marks, right? 80, 60, 40. These are grid lines, these guys. And so uh, once you start getting away from an axis, it can be hard to know, is it, you know what, what exactly is that number? So the grid lines can visually help you with that. And so maybe John is suggesting maybe they, there should have not just been these y uh, these horizontal grid lines, but maybe there should have been some of these X grid lines too that would would help you better estimate estimate is this point is this five thousand or is it a little more than five thousand or what? So you can do tricks like that. Good. Other other thoughts on this one? Okay. Is is it li is it? Well, yeah. Okay, we'll save that for later. Okay. What about this one? Ooh, somebody who's totally inspired when they saw this graph. That's good. <laughs> I, like that. I totally get it. Casey, what, 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 what's this graph trying to... Well, for, firstly, is it confusing or is it... What, what's your overall take on the graph? I'd say it's pretty confusing. Okay, confusing. And what, make, what do you think makes it confusing? The axes are... Uh, okay. I know, I know the like, location and... Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, but what are the units? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the, well, the, units, the units do say on the, on the bar, so the bottom is percentage. Right, the bottom is percentage. So they, they didn't state that, but, but, um, okay. I think it's pretty clear. Okay, so what is it trying to, Tevin, what are they trying to say with this? So uh, they're showing uh, the top percent of each of these countries, what percentage of, of income they take in. Uh, free, right? The, the top one percent, how yeah. much how much of income are they taking in their respective countries? Yeah. In 1990... Uh, the light blue relative to um, at whatever point this graph was generated, uh, I guess 2007, uh, how much it's increased. So in this case, this is, this is a, now this is another case of maybe you could say picking your data. In this case, this is called a ranked plot where the United States, it's not alphabetical, it's not geographic, right? <clears throat> it's once you get all your data and you, you have all your stuff together, it's going highest to lowest, right? So that's not necessarily misleading. It's a, it's a different way to, to present your data. So that would be an example of, we talked about before, just, you know, just showing your data. Uh, this, this is done in a way to emphasize patterns you might see uh, either consistently throughout or in certain, in, in certain uh, areas. We see this a lot with species ranking um, in, in the kind of stuff you guys typically do. Okay? Um, yeah, Robert. Well, I mean, now that I'm now that I'm looking at it, I would actually really prefer the percentages. Um, sorry, sorry. You prefer the percentages no, you mean down I here? Prefer the percentages that are right next to it to be the percent increase, because I mean, okay, eight, like like uh, the United States right now says eighteen point three percent, 
Okay. So, so Rob's saying that th this this number, this 18, is the is the total percent as of 2007. He would also like to see the percent increase. This dark blue. How much you guys do that? How much? How might you show that? Put it inside the blue bar. Put it inside the blue bar, right? Maybe with a white background. So let's say it's cut out. Or the legend. Mhm. Mm yeah. Or yeah. I suppose you could do the legend. But you have to list every single yeah, one. Okay. Cool. How about this one? How about this one? This is from one of your alumni, or alumnus, alums. Uh, in this case, I, I was I just grabbing examples to show you guys. It's happened to be in there. Okay. Fish per transect, uh, either non MPA or MPA. Well, it's the distance is, um, it's uh, showing the edge effect of the MPA from the alum fish. Right. So this is the edge, uh, this, this is where the marine protected area uh, starts. And so this is a, close to it, a little bit farther, et cetera, and then going farther away. And if we are the blue bars, that would be distance into the MPA. And if it's orange, that would be that same distance, uh, but going outside into the non-marine protected area. Yeah, something weird happened at 100 meters. Well, okay, right, okay, so we, we, we all have some specialized knowledge, and that wasn't the point. The point is just look at the graph part of it. Yeah, John. Something that would have helped me understand that is um, this, this graph is great, uh, but in addition to that graph, maybe like even an outline of the marine protected areas with the points where they took these measurements. Okay, specific, uh, okay. So, so these guys included a method picture here, which if you're doing a poster, okay, or maybe a graphical presentation, that might help save time, right? Instead of having to do two slides. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but John's suggestion is, hey, maybe a map would have been the thing that would have been more helpful rather than uh, sort of a, a how we were doing it kind of picture, okay? Could be, right. These are just thoughts you guys are tossing out, but yeah, good. So, okay, and then again, but we have here, we have the bars. We know what the bars are. The bars are the average. We don't know how many, we don't know an N of what, you know, but we know it's an average and that the error bars are standard error. Um, and this is number of fish and all this and that. Okay, cool. How about this one? That's mine, but you guys don't want to care. Well, okay, let's look at that. So this, this, is, this is a diagram one. So I just put this in here really quick to note that in some cases, you guys can, um, you don't have to make necessarily a map map, a, a, a GIS map. You can make a cartoon type <sighs> diagram that can help explain stuff. And this is just what happened with the Deepwater Horizon. What about this graph? Has, has anybody seen one of these graphs before? It's a radar graph, right? Good. So this is a bit weird that there's only one axis on this graph. So the center of the graph is zero, and any direct, any th this way, so in this case, what is it, 12? This is 12 units. This way is 12 units. This way is 12 units. So it doesn't matter which direction you go. It's, it's uh, uh, as we move away from the center, um, each of these lines are equal magnitude. So what do you think about this graph? Oops, what? What happened there? Okay, right, good. Yeah, so color, potential colorblind conflict, orange, green. Uh huh, good. Okay. So is it just saying those are the impacts of, of the deeper shock? Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's it's defined by best professional judgment. Okay. 
<laughs> there you go. Well, I figure, I figure that's in the paper somewhere, so, okay. Right, well, but you know, I mean, so, don't, but, but you, want, you want that defined, is what you guys are saying. How did you get this, this number? How did you get this thing? Okay, good. How about this? Ah, okay, so the picture's distracting. A lot of you guys like to use pictures. Sometimes that can be effective. Uh, mm, again, maybe this is the kind of thing where you have limited time, and you're trying to show, maybe this, is, maybe this background's illustrating something, and you, know, you wanna do that, but in general, the background images, uh, I, I think on average, tend to be more distracting, or at least make it harder for you to accurately read the numbers. And so given that, it's best to generally leave off background pictures. Yeah, Daniel. I agree, but uh, I mean, if they really, really wanted to, they could have just made it more uh, uh, faded out a bit, you know, I mean, just so you Watermarked kind of thing, more, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, you really need it, but. And then the, I'm a little confused on why they put the native bar in the legend, but not on the graph, or why is it it, it It is. It is, but because they put a picture behind it, it's really hard for you to oh, see it. Okay. So that's a great example of why pictures are problematic. It, it looks as if, it looks as if, right? It looks as if they have symbols on this line and on this line, but this one they don't really. So, you know, what, what's up with that? It's almost like the picture was an artistic representation of a downward trend. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, 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 that's, I think that's the site where the, where the stuff took place. Other thoughts? Okay. How about this one? The stars and the question marks make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no... What's the number? There's no... Oh, yeah, what's, what's the units? Yeah, okay, so units are hard to know. X-axis, don't know what these things are. Presumably it's time because here we, we seem to be, there's some this implication of, of moving through time, although it doesn't appear to be equidistant, but still. I'm not a fan. Okay. So, the, too. so this example, I don't, not want to throw, don't want to throw anybody in the bus, but this is from uh, your Pentagon uh, generated this. Um, so... You know, okay. If you want to see really cruddy graphs, generally look at uh, folks trying to make a political point <laughs> or folks trying to sell you something. Those are, those are the two go-to places to find, uh, perhaps we could say misleading or not well uh, put together graphs in terms of an objective presentation of quantitative data. Okay, whoa, whoa, all right, what about that? There's a map. <laughs> Want me to do that again? I don't know if I can handle it. Oh, I feel like there's a demon looking at me or something. Ah, and then the map emerges from hell. Okay, so, so good map, bad map. What is MAPE? I have no idea what MAPE is. <laughs> So these are all, these are all, I'm not, just to be clear, I did not make up these graphs to sh make a thing. These are all actual real things people have put together. So, uh, so I don't know what MAPE is, uh, but, but, so that, that's a problem. At least they have a scale bar and a north arrow. Okay, good. So they have a scale bar. Good. I can't even see the north arrow. Who knows what they are? Good, needs a legend, excellent. And so here's perhaps a classic example. Here's perhaps a classic example we talked about before about you guys getting so in the weeds in your uh, project and you have your name you know, for your site and it makes t or your organism or whatever, you, it makes total sense to you, but it's foreign to other folks. So when other folks look at this, possibly, I don't know, maybe the community that uses this map totally understands everything, but is salve 
salve two and bland seven, you know, and, and JNKT1, is that, a, can I know what that is? Or could I just put the name of a city if it's in a city? Or the name of the station or, you know, whatever. And that's going to be more helpful to folks that are not experts or not part of your study, right? So is that, and the scale, uh, also, clearly a legend would have helped with that. Anything else? Maybe, like, because America's bad at geography now, not everybody would know that's the well, South. I agree with that. So, okay. <laughs> that, the, this, is, this is the state formerly known as Florida that people won't be able to recognize in a few years because it'll be underwater. Yes, right. Okay, all right, good. Oh, man. Oh, not even a graph. And did they just no. screen, no. Screen, no. Did they print screen? Uh, <laughs> it sure looks like it to me. And you got to love how these highlighted. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Is that what you clicked on? Click on it. Yeah. It's a timeout word. So. Oh, my God. You should never do this. Their teacher right? is terrible. You should never. <laughs> You should never just do a screen grab or a, a, you know, grabbing off of the raw data product or output of some program, right? Just like you should never insert a Google Earth map, right? <laughs> yes, I don't want you to ever insert a Google Earth map. I want you to make, you could use Google Earth to make an effective map, but I do not want, this, this shows slop. Now, if someone needed a report from me today, and they just told me today, and they said, can you come at 2 o'clock? Well, then maybe I would do something like this, because I didn't have enough time, maybe, to do the full thing. But that, that's not the kind of thing that you guys ever want to do, OK? Always have time to create it. And if, it, if we wanted to generate a table, make it a, a real table, not some spit it out Excel version. What about this bad boy? There's a table. There's a table. I just said you should have a table. Okay, clearly it's all garbly gook, right? We don't know what this means. We don't know what, what it's referring to. Sep separate from that, right, there's, there's just fundamental formatting issues. So we could make the, the neatest graph in the world, but if it, it didn't port over correctly, whatever, all that work might be for naught. Um, so we always want to check our graph in the medium in which it's being shown. So check it online, check it out, prints out, whatever the case may be. Is that this is electrophoresis or what is it? Presumably. It's something about a back, an F tucker, a hypo, a leg, <laughs> an A took, an unknown, a disc, and a I guess left toe, I guess. <laughs> Presumably, it's, I would guess it's different parts of the body, and they were looking for this particular, I don't know, protein or gene, how it's being expressed or whatever. So there's implication of how many base pairs this is, so this is probably a gene. What's that? So, this is the kind of graph you would give to potentially fellow experts. When you guys make your graphs for us, your audience is hopefully people beyond just us, right? You want to talk to the other teachers. You want to talk to the managers. You want to talk to the policy makers, right? So, this kind of inside the beltway stuff, that ain't cool, right? Now, I'm not saying you, shouldn't, you couldn't show this data. This might be incredibly important. But again, just like you guys said, we need a title. We need a description. We need to be, have uh, people be able to look at this and interpret it at least grossly before we even open our mouths. OK? Look at that. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Color blindness. It's overwhelming. <laughs> I'm gonna, you're going to have a seizure by looking at this graph? I don't even cut epic. It's great. I mean, I do agree with Robert. There's just a lot of color going on. Like, why does the percent look camouflaged? 
because the percent is camouflage. What do you have a problem with that? What's your what's your deal? <laughs> More description. Okay, is that, was that leg hold trap? Was that camera trap? Right? So, so what was this? Okay, and by success, what does success mean? Presumably means catching a critter, I guess? Under those standard, uh, standard deviations. Who knows? Who knows? Don't know if that's an average. Don't know if that's a standard error. Don't know what those uh, points and or lines represent. Where are they caught? Were they on the island, on the mainland? Yep. Percent of what? Yeah, okay. 93 to 95 to 96. So, right. So, the, the years, so good catch, the years are not evenly spaced. Everybody, everybody got that? So, the years are not evenly spaced, even though the, the putting them down here implies that they are. Uh, we also go negative because I don't know what that means. If, assuming this is trapping, so I guess if we put traps out, a certain number make more foxes or something. I don't don't really understand how you <laughs> no. interpret that. Um, there's some weirdness, as as Rob was pointing out with the percent. There's something overwritten on it or something. All of the text is capitalized. Do not do that, he says in capital letters. Make, it's just a lot harder to read. If you're doing an acronym or something, like CSUCI, let's say, that's okay, that can be all capitalized. But, but uh, trap success does not need to be capitalized. Uh, we also have a trippy, I don't know what that is, a X-Files hillside in the back or something going on that is uh, more of that uh, crud junk, chart junk stuff that's just there that uh, by default business graph people love to make, throw these in. Microsoft PowerPoint loves to throw this kind of crud in there that just is a distraction and takes us away from the graph. Also, let's have a look. How big is this graph? In, in, in the floor space of our, of our uh, slide here, which could be the page or whatever the whatever the medium upon which we're showing this. It could, be a bigger. it could be a lot bigger. Check it out, right? It looks like uh, here's 98 to 99, at least that distance over here, and more than that over here. So we could have made it that much bigger, that much easier to see, that much easier to read. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, other comments?